Hi and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial series with MongoDB. So this series is going to be probably a few videos long and we're going to be taking a look at how we use PowerShell to interact with Mongo databases. So in this first video, I'm going to go over on how to configure your Mongo database. So we're going to be creating an account and a free Mongo database that's going to be up to 500 megabytes. I know it's not big, but it is perfect to practice with. And then we're going to go ahead and install that PowerShell module and just connect to our database, do a few little quick commands with the sample data that they give us. And that should give us enough basic knowledge to then be able to move forward on with our project that we're going to be using Mongo database for. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started by opening up a browser and going to mongodb.com. And then there you're going to see try Atlas free. So we're going to be clicking on that. Now you can put in all your info or just sign up with an existing Google account. Since my email is already a uh, Google account, I had to actually create a secondary email uh, just for this video because I accidentally signed up with the Jack Programmer Outlook account by accident. Um, so we're just going to hit this here. You're going to select your email account or put in your credentials there um, that you would like. And once you create that, it is a pretty seamless process here. You're going to accept the privacy policy in terms of service, hit submit. And once that pops up there, it's going to be setting up the actual database itself. Um, and it's going to ask you a couple different questions based on just what you're trying to use MongoDB for. Usually I would just put learn MongoDB. Um, how long have you been developing software with MongoDB? Of course, this is all up to you really. Um, we're just going to say for this purpose of the video, I've never developed software with MongoDB before. Um, what languages are you going to be using? You're going to notice that there is no PowerShell. Um, by default, they don't give any real PowerShell documentation on the MongoDB website, but that's okay. That's why this video exists. So we're just going to hit other. And what types of data are we going to be using? Uh, let's do customer user profile data. And that's it for now. And then for the last question of will your application include any of the following um, architectural models? Um, you could probably put microservices if you really wanted to, um, but I'm going to put not sure and none. Again, you don't even have to do this. You can completely skip this. It's not mandatory at all. And then once we hit finish, it's going to create your account. I'm going to pause the recording just because it does give you your IP address as a default. It basically automatically adds your IP address to get access to that database. So I'm just going to click on finish here. And actually, it does provide you one more screen before it shows you your IP address. I just don't want my IP address to be on the video here. So we're going to select the M0, uh, which is the free option. You can see the other ones, they do cost money. So we're going to pick the free option. It's for a learning and exploring MongoDB in a cloud environment. As you can see, we have 512 megabytes of storage here. Um, you're going to name your cluster. What I usually name mine in this case is just testing cluster. Uh, we also want to make sure that we automate the security setup and preload the sample data set. Um, you can also choose your cloud provider, whether you prefer AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure. Based on my location, Azure is usually probably going to be the best one for me. You can also say that you'll do this later. But it, honestly, it is just a lot easier to set it up right there and then. And then you're going to hit on Create Deployment. All right, so once you've clicked on Create Deployment, you're going to get a window that pops up that basically says it added your IP address to the network access. And it also gives you a prompt um, to create your database user. I actually just went ahead and ignored that part. So I don't have any database users. So I'm going to be creating that just here. So we're going to click on add new database user. We're going to make it a password authentication. We're going to put the name here as jacked. 
And we're just going to auto generate a secure password. We're going to copy that here. And let's go ahead and let's add a built in role. And we are going to select the Atlas admin role. And we're going to add user. So now we have our user created. And if we go and click on clusters here, you can say there are clusters being created. Um, so this does take, it does say it takes about one to three minutes. I've noticed that it can sometimes take like three to five minutes. It never takes a very, very long time anyways. But what we can actually already go and do is let's go ahead and let's go into our Visual Studio code and install that module while we are waiting for our cluster to be created. So let's go ahead and in Visual Studio Code, we are gonna do a install dash module and we're gonna install the module MDBC. And if we go ahead and we just run that here, I already have it installed, um, but if you do not have it installed, usually you'll be prompted for a question of, are you sure you wanna install everything? I would usually put A for yes to all, and then it's gonna install that module. So then you should be all good to go. And then we just have to wait for our cluster to be created. So we will come back um, once that's created. All right, so here we can see that our cluster is online and it's already loading the sample data set, but that's all right. We can let it load the sample data set. There's already some data in there, so that's gonna be perfectly fine. Now to get our connection string that we need, we're just going to have to hit connect here. And then I usually just pick drivers. Now for this section here, it really doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, you can pick Node.js, you can pick Python. None of it will really change because we grab this connection string down here. So we're just going to copy this here. And we are then going to go back to our Visual Studio code. And we're just going to shrink this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and let's get started at writing our code. So we're going to need to use the connect dash MDBC commandlet. And then we're going to pass in a connection string. And you guessed it, we're going to be pasting that connection string that we copied. Now there's going to be a section in the connection string here that's written as db password um, in some greater than and less than brackets. We're just going to change that to password here. And we're just going to put password is going to then be equal to we are going to paste in our password here because it will not be the same by the time the video gets released. But what would you would want to actually do, actually what we're gonna do is right off the bat, do it properly here. So what I'm actually gonna do is we are going to do a get credential and we're gonna store that into the credential variable here real quick. And all we're going to then do is do a message of MongoDB. And then we can even have username. We can put our username here for MongoDB as well as jacked here. We're going to run this. And then I'm just going to paste in the password that I got. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to do a creds and we're going to pipe that to export XML path. And I'm going to get my path of my working directory here. So we're going to copy path. And we are then going to just export that to creds.xml. And we're going to export that. Perfect. And what that is going to give us is give us a credential file that is going to be secure. So here we can do creds equals import apply XML. And then we can do our path here. And all I'm going to do is copy the path of our credential file here. And if we actually go ahead and import that, 
And now if we actually look inside of it, it won't show me my password in clear text. It does pass it in as a secure string. Now with the connection string, it does have to be passed through in just a text here. So what I like to do in this situation is we're gonna do a variable wrapper here. We're gonna do creds dot get network credential open and close parentheses and then dot password now that will actually get me the password in plain text into that connection string so that's going to be perfect so let's go ahead and let's just run these two lines here and that's going to get me connected so now the way that we can actually verify that we are connected because there's no output to actually show you that you're connected is to just do a simple get dash mdbc database so let's go ahead and let's run this here and we are going to see that we actually get a couple results back now we have our sam sample underscore mflix now this is our sample data that we've loaded in so what i like to do is let's create a variable called db equals uh, get mdbc database and we're going to grab our database called sample underscore mflix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be working in the movies collection. Now you're going to wonder, how do I already know that there's a movies collection? If we actually go into our Mongo cluster here and we browse collections, we can see that we have a movies collections here. You do have other collections. You can pick whichever one you really want to work with. I'm just picking the movies one just because. Um, so let's go ahead and let's set up that connection there. So we're going to grab that collection. So once again, we're just going to create a variable called collection. We're going to make that equal to get m dbc collection. Name is going to be movies. We also have to specify what database it's in. So that's where we're going to reference our db variable. So if we go ahead and we run this and we look at what is in the dollar sign collection, we're going to see that we get our collection namespace is the sample mflix movies. So that is perfect. Now, if we want to get our data from that Mongo database here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a get dash m dbc data. And we're going to grab it from our collection and we're going to reference our collection variable. Now you're going to see a whole bunch of information pop up here. Uh, there is quite a bit of information. So what we can actually do is just store that in a movies variable here. And if we get that, you're going to notice that with MongoDB, all of these are extremely quick. So we can already get the movies.count and we can see that we already got back 21,349 results, which is crazy fast. Now there is a way that we can even filter. Now, of course, once you have a PowerShell object, we can look at what's inside the movies and we can easily, um, of course, filter this. But the MongoDB has a filter method here. So we can get MDBC data collection is going to be the collection. And we can do a filter here. Now, the filter is a little different compared to what you're probably used to in PowerShell. So we're going to have to do a pair of single quotes here. And you're going to be filtering this via JSON. So we're going to do um, filter and then open and close curly brackets, title, and let's go ahead and let's look for this video, this movie right here. We already have one here, it's called Shaft. So let's go Shaft here. And if we just get that, we're gonna see that we just get that movie back. Um, so we get all the information from that movie. So that's how we would do a filter. Uh, now you're going to notice that these do come back as hash tables and not as PowerShell 
objects. Um, so that is just something to remember. I'm going to be showing you guys a lot more on this um, in the future videos. This is really just a beginner video just to get started with this um, module as uh, just something to note that all your values come back as some hash tables or key value pairs. Um, so now let's go ahead and let's add a movie to um, that collection here. So we're going to do an at symbol uh, with open and closing curly brackets. We're going to set up an ID for it. And we're just going to make an ID here uh, because the date is 2025, 0119. That should be pretty unique. Um, and then we're going to do a semicolon and then we're going to do title and we're going to make our title very clever here. We're just going to name it jacked programmer and then we're going to pipe that to add M BBC data and we're going to add it to our collection dollar sign collection. We go ahead and we run that. Now what we can actually go ahead and just copy paste this get MDBC data, filter on the title, and we're gonna filter jacked programmer. And there is our object coming back as well. Um, so we can see our custom ID and our title. Now let's say we wanted to actually delete that. We can actually put that as a variable called movie here. And then we can pipe our movie variable to remove dash MDBC data collection and make sure that we reference our proper collection here. And now if we go ahead and we try to find that movie again, we're going to see that we get nothing back, which is exactly what we would expect after removing something. So that is how to create a Mongo database and interact with a Mongo database in a nutshell with PowerShell. Now, I know that this was very, very fast. This was just to get you guys um, familiar with how to create your MongoDB and how to just connect to it get some simple data, interact with your collections, interact with the databases. Um, in the future videos, we're actually gonna be building a project. Um, it's more than likely gonna be something Active Directory related where we're gonna be just storing some information um, about our Active Directory data in our Mongo database. Uh, it could be anything you really want. Um, you can definitely follow along or use your own example but we're going to be playing a lot with these different commandlets and just learning how to really create collections as well um, in PowerShell as well. So if there's anything that you guys would like to see specifically with MongoDB, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to kind of include everything in those videos as well. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.